Good morning and welcome to Panasonic Connect's Higher Education Webinar. My name is Larissa Zubon and over the course of the next half hour, we will be shining a light on how Panasonic technology enhances digital learning experiences within higher education. We have been working with a host of major institutions for several years in helping implement digital learning for their students. AV technology has been widely adopted within universities to support face-to-face -face teaching with the usage of high brightness projection in lecture theaters or touchscreen displays in seminar rooms and huddle spaces. Most recently, however, we have a dramatic increase in digital learning through the usage of our PTZ cameras used within lecture capture systems. Lecture capture acts as an enhancement to traditional face-to-face -face teaching, providing more flexibility to students to go back on lectures and help fill in the blanks, particularly when studying for exams. Digital learning also provides an opportunity to attract international students and most recently has ensured that students get the best possible learning experience when face-to-face -face teaching was paused. We will be joined by Hilma Salak, the Business Development Manager for Higher Education in the Dach region. He will be covering the unique class-to-class -class solution that Panasonic are providing to support the growth of digital learning in a little more detail. This will be followed by a discussion between Professor Katie Lang from the University of Applied Sciences Düsseldorf and our colleague Stefan Haug. And last but not least, Dean Offert will give us a short live demo with one of our key solutions for the education market, our PTZ cameras and ecosystems. If you have any questions during the webinar, please post these in the live chat function and we'll be joined by the speakers later to answer them at the end of the session. Without further ado, let's get started. Hilma, the stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lisa, for this nice introduction. Yeah, Hilma Zalak, Panasonic, uh, business developer, higher education. And uh, with my team, uh, I am I'm driving, we are driving the digital transformation in education. And uh, we are ensuring that uh, there are systems developed, um, technical solutions developed for classical lecture capture, online and hybrid learning. Yeah. Throughout the last years, we had the chance to, to gain a lot of experiences. And uh, literally, we have met uh, hundreds of universities. Uh, we're able to listen to them and, and creating ideas and solutions, actually, and have realized a lot of projects. Yeah. But um, before that, uh, going into technical detail, I would like to have a brief view into the situation uh, before the crisis, yeah? situation in higher education before the crisis, um, where we mainly talked at that time uh, about frontal teaching. Frontal teaching means the lesson took place at a particular time and place. Teacher did purely defined content delivery and basically one size fits all content material. Even at that time, uh, we were saying this is synchronous and in-class teaching. And even uh, at that time, and that time before, um, this format was already a little bit attacked yeah, by new ideas, by driving towards digitalization. Now, I think we can say that the role of the teacher has already changed to a guide to the students, yeah, guiding them through uh, also via digital learning into their studies. When crisis started, what happened? Yeah, we were actually directly uh, jumping into cold water a little bit because uh, the demand was so high and so dramatic. Yeah, um, what did universities first? They enabled professors and students to get online. How did they do this? Mainly, uh, in many cases at least, um, they were buying video conferencing tools. Yeah, they, were, they were buying tools like Zoom, MS Teams, WebEx and so forth. And, uh, but still, this was purely synchronous communication only. And also a few things we observed there was um, behind that, there was no sustainable solution established in many, in many institutions, not in all. But uh, also what we have seen is actually that many of the teachers, since they had no time to adapt and to be trained and, 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 uh, 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 trained and, and get into these new tools, and uh, the new way of teaching, they were taking the original material from in-class sessions into web conference. Yeah. And this led to the, the, the student engagement went low and lower over the semester. And there was no recording. In many cases, there was no recording and no professional 
centralized automated video management systems behind, like we are doing actually with Panopto, our, our partner. So talking about Panopto, Panopto recently stated also two facts uh, from research that they found out. Yeah? Looking at the students themselves, they found out that uh, only about 15% of the students actually live on the campus. That means 85% have to commute all the time. Um, and virtual learning, hybrid learning, gives them more flexibility, actually, to define the time when to be present and when to learn remote. Another fact found out by interviewing students and universities was that the majority, uh, like 73% like 70, of the students, um, they think and they believe in future they will, they will have some purely online courses. Same time, they think it will be good and they will join hybrid courses as well. Looking at universities and uh, the faculties themselves, they say they will teach hybrid courses in, pan, uh, in pandemic, yeah? like the majority of 57%. And a small majority believes that nearly all courses will be available online post pandemic. So this is a clear trend, I think. It might vary from nation to nation, um, and it might come sooner or later in, in each region. But it is a pure trend that we can all observe. So yeah, hybrid classrooms, new hybrid classrooms, that's something we see in nearly all universities right now. And the question every university has to ask themselves, how, the, how can a university provide a safe, equitable, engaging learning experience that would accommodate both remote and in-class learners. Um, we ourselves, we are uh, developing and creating solutions together with our strategic partner Panopto for the video content management, the video asset management, and Matrox, uh, hardware management, remote recorder for Panopto, enabling to record and stream. And the first thing we always say is, yeah, try to take best of both scenarios, online and in class. Starting there with uh, PTZ cameras, like fixed installed PTZ cameras, like we are using today. This PTZ camera can even, can even follow me. When I move through the uh, room, it will follow me. Yeah, so it means the PTZ camera can be combined with the auto tracking, and I could just move around the, the, the area. I can uh, uh, use uh, other areas in my, in my uh, teaching area, yeah, and we'll always have a nice, very professional, high quality picture. Same time, projectors are uh, one key element, even in video production. Like uh, you see the background behind me, this is created by projectors, laser projectors, 4K laser projectors, 20,000 ANSI lumen you see here. This is a professional backdrop scenario that is also used in, in the German television news. Uh, uh, every evening, you can see that, and it's a dynamic background. Yeah, I can, I can, I can blind in a video conference uh, uh, behind me. I can have any additional material I can speak about, and I can even walk very close to the wall and wouldn't see anything. Yeah, the projectors are in the ceiling. You can't hear them. You can't see them. So projectors are key elements. Same like the interactive displays, yeah? So I can work on the interactive displays. I can do annotations. I can share actually what I'm working in as a teacher and, and share this and stream it out or record it for streaming afterwards. Wireless presentation is also a huge important factor. Yeah? We are ourselves using the Presit, Panasonic Presit solution there to have a seamless uh, streaming actually to the recorder or to, to, to uh, a video conference, for instance. Yeah? So I can move in with one, two, three laptops to have different contents, and everything will be streamed with 60, 60 frames full HD yeah, with, without any, any problem and delay. Video content management, Panopto will manage everything, will uh, record it together with smart trucks, and uh, uh, will also index it. That means we have an automatic workflow from the live session or the production to uh, <coughs> um, or, uh, the webcast. Um, and the video management system will give it to the learning management system, like Moodle, Canvas, Elias, whatever is in place in the individual uh, university. That makes, at the end, a fully searchable video database um, that ensures an efficient learning. Yeah, that are just an efficient learning because every work, word I speak, everything that's in the presentation and everything that's recognized by OCR will be searchable. And I can just search for the very moment I need to learn or the subject I'm, I'm, I'm seeking for.
yeah, how does Panasonic actually, how did we jump into this cold water and how did we gain our knowledge? How, um, we were able actually to create a big space for innovation and evaluation. We built our own lecture hall. It's a huge lecture hall actually. We are using ourselves for lectures, trainings and certifications. We are inviting end users all the time um, to learn things and we are combining things from video, audio, uh, the, the, the uh, media control management and the whole automatic workflow is basically realized there. So we could um, we could set up all scenarios used and applicable for any university situation. We have fully integrated the system in our media controls. That means you could enter the room, you can switch on the light, the projectors, you could just start with your presentation and will be recorded or streamed into any live synchronous media like video conference or uh, it will go to any uh, uh, webcast. Can be done by, by Panopto as well. Yeah. So at the very end, also here, we have the fully searchable video database. Uh, in companies, that's the uh, same importance than in the, in the higher education. And last but not least, also in our, in our uh, lecture hall, we have, a, we have a 4K protection, a double protection. With, uh, and uh, uh, this, is, this is really so much flexibility, actually, for the presenter, yeah, because you have a, a ratio by 32 by, by 9 or by 10. And you have a lot of space, actually, to have dynamic background and to have inside students that are very uh, engaged and very, uh, very much uh, into the subject. And also when we stream the whole content and at very high quality, you always stay with the engagement of the participants. Yeah, this is uh, another point, the Panasonic Production Studio. This is also a scenario, it comes more and more in universities. So a specific room that is set up, like in our case, it's set up with, with uh, five, six PTZ cameras that can follow you automatically. And we have set it up with two scenarios. Single user, that means I'm on my own, I enter the room, I switch on the lights, projector, cameras, and I start working without any, any uh, difficulties. Yeah, I can do this with a tablet control. So it's very simple to use, um, very easy to use. Or I can do it with an operator, like today. We have two operators here supporting me, streaming it into the, into the event platform, for instance. Yeah, and um, this is very, very useful. Yeah. We have interactive screens. I mentioned it. We have preset wireless uh, uh, transmission, actually, from my laptop, from the display itself. So we can use that. Then we have the PTZ cameras, uh, very high quality, 4K quality, actually, that we can produce and record and stream. And we combine it with the auto tracking. That means if I would be on my own, I could use the auto tracking and the camera would just follow me around the room. Yeah, projectors I have mentioned. This is where the projectors are, just uh, uh, on top of me. And they are creating the backdrop. And last but not least, all the content, the program out, we call it, um, is given actually to the Matrox recorder. And it can record and can give it to Panopto and can do the webcast itself and a very, very high quality. Yeah, that's uh, basically from my side. Um, it's, uh, I would like to invite you for a virtual tour. Um, you are highly invited to visit us in, in, uh, in real life in Wiesbaden, Germany, or uh, book a virtual tour on our website. Thank you very much. Um, next to the theory and the consolidated opinions, we would like to get a hands-on and behind-the-scenes perspective and ha have asked, therefore, uh, Frau Professor Kati Lang uh, from the University of Applied Science in Düsseldorf to share her personal experience on the subject. Thank you for being here, uh, Frau Professor Lang, today. Um, Thank you very much, Stefan. I really enjoy our fruitful cooperation and, uh, well, I always love a chat with you. Thank you. Thank you. Kind words. Uh, Frau Professor Lang has co-authored a research paper in 2020 about the potential of increasing learning success by digitalization. Furthermore, she's engaged in national and international working groups to foster and nurture digital learning. But more about that in a minute. Um, Frau Professor Lang, um, one question is basically urging me and I found most uh, obvious. Um, the research showed that professors were open to digital learning solutions way before COVID-19 forced the digitalization into teaching on the one hand. On the other hand, the same majority said that the missing openness of their colleagues will be the biggest challenge for the digitalization. How do you think about that? Does that reflect your personal experience? 
Um, maybe it helps to have a look at the circumstances and um, also somehow the political will. Before the pandemic, we had a lot of projects fostered by the government to digitize our, well, teaching. And um, that happened on a national and also on the European level. So some of the colleagues started to learn about the digitalization in learning and teaching, about the tools, about the possibilities also. And then the pandemic came. At the start of the pandemic, I perceived it as a wait and see. So first of all, we were told no digital. After I think it was two weeks, the new path was go digital now. So this is why we had a lot of different approaches on how digital learning or digital teaching might look like. Um, it was all, always based on, first of all, the personal knowledge and the personal experiences of the colleagues and also myself. And um, also about the possibilities, meaning technicals and uh, tools for teaching, communication, and just, just using everything that, that would be needed. Um, right now we're back on campus. So the political will seems to be that we still held or hold our sessions uh, in presence. Hybrid or digital is not so common or only allowed as an exception. Um, so this is where we were basically put in. Um, from the didactic and pedagogical pedagogical point of view. Um, this is also always my perspective as to technical sales. Digital usually is a tool and also a necessity for students to be future employees. Um, I was lucky to have the resources to digitize my teaching before the pandemic and then refer to my experiences once we started. But it's still an ongoing process and actually it will always be. So luckily we have the technical tools such as Panopto so to be where we are now. Thank you, kind words even uh, about uh, Panopto here. Um, and you already asked my second question, what has changed uh, since we did the, the research? We did the research last year. Uh, mm -hmm. It looks like it has increased, uh, accelerated. Is that correct? Would you agree? Um, yes, sure. I mean, everybody just noticed on 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 the world being open now to to have the possibilities to digitalize everything we're doing as to communication. And uh, from the European perspective, well, within the ASA, we have we we always try to just have the European perspective. But our members are from Finland, France, Italy, Austria, and Germany. So we noticed that uh, with being digital or becoming digital, the pre-assumptions changed, as well as methods and tools such as platforms and software. So if we somehow refer to the triad of competencies, we have the methodological uh, expertise, we have the specialist expertise, and but we also have the communication and media expertise. And this is where it comes to. If we look at sales, and we always teach about technical sales, um, selling is a very interactive and co-creating process of making it happen, and that means communication. So right now and also in the future, we have rather a digital or a hybrid communication. This is where we need to get our students to. They need to learn how to use these tools, how to use these possibilities, and then make it happen. Um, it is a relevant learning process, but also the students need to know how to learn digitally. And uh, furthermore, for our colleagues, it's always about pre-planning. We have the methodology that we need to know about. We have to reinvent our classes. We have to upscale ourselves and our colleagues. And um, the net, the needed tech base 
seems to be there. So um, if we want to adapt to today's circumstances, we need to get the students. And those students are now active knowledge seekers and we just need to enable them. Good point. Uh, thank you very much. Also a very good point. Um, um, describing um, the current teaching situation as, as a test field, as a preparation for, for, for the work life. And we see that also in our daily business um, experience, we see also that more and more events, more and more exhibitions become hybrid events. Yeah? Mm -hmm. What used to be an only physical event is now it's actually standard that, that you also now have a, uh, any kind of digital um, experience with an event. Thank you very much for your time and for sharing your insights today. Yeah, it was You're welcome. Thank you a lot. Thank you, Stefan. We will see you later for our Q&A session. And now we will be moving to the UK where our colleague Dean uh, is giving us an insight into the PTZs. Thank you from the studio and hello everyone. My name is Dean Offord and I'm the Technical Product Marketing Manager here at Panasonic Broadcast and Pro V, and I'm delighted to show you in the next 10 minutes our exciting new PTZs for 2022, as well as some updates of our popular softwares that can enhance your collaboration and learning spaces. So let's get started with the PTZs that are coming out right now in 2022. I'm going to switch over to my desktop, and we're proud to introduce these exciting new models, beginning with the AWHE20 and UE20. The HE20 being an HD capable and UE20 being a 4K capable PTZ with 12 times optical zoom and also 74.1 degrees as a wide angle lens, which also have different outputs such as 3G SDI, HDMI, USB, and is meant to be a low cost solution so you can install these into smaller classrooms with great video quality which you can then plug into different systems. They're a brand new design and this is based off of market feedback to be able to have these types of cameras deployed in an installation and also work with our popular Panasonic software. Moving on to the brand new AWUE40 and AWUE50. These are the new successors of the popular HE38s, HE40s and HE42s, which some of you watching might be familiar with. They have HDMI or HDMI and 3G SDI like the UE50, and they also have 24 times optical zoom as standard, 74.1 degree wide angle lenses, and they also feature NDI HX2 and SRT IP certifications as well. So these are really great all-in-one cameras that have been redesigned from the inside and out and also have a completely gearless system now so they're even faster on presets too. So if you need to move them around an auditorium they're going to be even faster and quieter than ever before. And the AWUE80 is the successor of the popular AWUE70 and this is a full bandwidth, H, uh, full bandwidth NDI PTZ camera and we're really excited to see this go into lots of different workflows, including studio workflows for PTZs, which also are appearing more and more in education as well. Here's what the total lineup looks like for nerds like me, so you can have a complete overview, all 4K capable now. We have some HD products which can cater to those specific installations, but as you can see, we've got lots of different workflows from the UE4, perfect for small classrooms with a 111 degree wide angle lens, right up to our UE150, which is kind of like our flagship um, for really difficult shooting conditions. This has been installed into auditoriums around the world as well. I have a UE4 right next to me, and this is a type of camera that also has a microphone built in and can plug in as a really super powered webcam, as an example, into lecture capture recorders so you can get started for any type of teaching right away. And this all connects to our very popular controllers in any type of installation. If you need an additional controller, the RP60 has been there. And then we have all of our great software like AV management software, IP driver software, and also auto tracking software, which has been developed over the years and has been including free updates ever since we launched this program for PTZs. So that's enough about the lineup. Let's take a look at the software itself that I was talking about. I'm going to start off with one of my favorite tools. You've got Easy IP Plus. It's one of my favorites because this has saved me a lot of time when it's come to an installation. If you have cameras already, any of the software I'm talking about today, and you have Panasonic PTZ cameras, you can actually download off of our past website and I'll direct where you can get that at the end of the session. Super simple. I've got my laptop connected here in the studio. And with this tool, it can then sniff different IP addresses on a network. I can select different network adapters as well. 
and then it can give us a little JPEG image and it's saying that it can see the camera and if I need to adjust any network settings it's literally as quick as going in and changing it from static to DHCP entering the IP addresses and away we go so this is a uh, anyone who's working in AV this is a, a dream because if you've got batch cameras we can also do something like auto IP where we can list different cameras and we can batch them out as well and telling what ranges it needs to go to we can also open the web GUI we have user administration settings, so we can set different passwords to access the cameras. We're now supporting 802.1x authentication and UE40 and above with these cameras. So also having user rights when they're protected on the cameras is really, really important this day and age, especially in education facilities. One of the best bits about this, though, and which I think is really, really essential and a time saver, is EasyIP Plus has this auto firmware batch updating feature. So if I have multiple cameras on the network and connected to the internet, you can actually identify the cameras that are connected on the network, and then it's able to be able to tell us if it needs an update or not. So we can actually download the firmware updates off of our Panasonic Pass page, and then we can get started. I can also put my camera feed on here on the lower left. So really cool tool available for download today and you can really get started with this and um, it really saves a lot of time so going on from there i'm going to open probably now my real favorite software is the ptz control center ptz control center created by administration rights it's a tool that allows us to be able to log in and as an av manager we can then see all of our cameras connected on the network and we can even custom name them into different lecture theaters or different rooms it's literally as easy as saying, well, I want this lecture theatre to then have these PTZ cameras installed, and then I can also custom name them and group them. Really nice, because once I've done all of this, I can then go into the PTZ camera, I can actually go in and control it just using my D-pad. You imagine if you're in an AV office and you need to make some camera adjustments, uh, uh, someone's turned the camera around because they didn't want anybody viewing that particular session, which we also built in a privacy mode when they power down, they can face around and they can come back on when you need to. Um, the ability to be able to just adjust it like this is, is really, really powerful. And then we can also change like our preset settings as well. So as you see, we've got user presets on there and we've got different thumbnails. We can quickly activate them. And what's also really great is I can actually switch between cameras really quickly. So I've got the UE100 on this side and then I've got the UE50 here and it's absolutely instant. You imagine you've got over 100 cameras sitting on a network and they're all designated into different facilities. This is really, really great, and it's completely free. I can even plug in a USB joystick or use a gaming controller if I wanted to enhance that control capability from my office or even from my home. If you want a VLAN, that is also a possibility. It's a really flexible software. I do highly encourage, if you do have Panasonic PTZs, if you're thinking about Panasonic PTZs, this is a must-download software to get started right away. And also, you can open Easy IP Plus, that first software, right here, and uh, be able to change your network settings super simply. Okay, now probably one of the most unique softwares that we got here is the auto tracking software. Now I think this is one of the most innovative softwares that we do have. So Panasonic designed auto tracking software with our PTZs to utilize IP streaming and it's using a very special algorithm to actually be able to read the data from the IP stream and then what it can do is in real time tell the cameras where to move. And we have different versions of this software which then allow us to be able to have them installed on servers where you can then have multiple cameras um, auto tracking. So you can see the cameras moving on here. If I actually switch over to my feed, we've got the output of the camera. So we can have different cameras tracking on a server. We can have with SF200, four cameras tracking on one server. We can have SF100 where it's tracking on a, a PC. And the really cool thing about this software is the fact that it's scalable. So the more powerful and the more enhanced we get you know, graphics processors or we have different updates to our hardware, the software begins to evolve. And it evolves even more so because we're doing free updates where you can then um, have new features that which are implemented. And this software is where it is today because of users such as yourself watching, telling us what you want to see out of the cameras. And I think it's really, really cool and really, really unique. And if I actually go back onto here, we can actually see my face being detected. We have all those preset user functions that you can see on there. And we can also change the different uh, viewing distances. It can zoom in on me, it can go back to a wide, it can preview, we can set pan tilt limits, and you've got directional control as well. So this is a super unique software. It's got a 90 day free trial, which you can download today and start playing with it if you want to with Panasonic.
Okay, so that's auto tracking software. And the last thing I'm just gonna show you is something that's really highly requested, which is NDI. So I'm gonna switch back to my camera over here. We have two different ways where we can connect cameras over a network. We can take cameras like this, where they have a traditional USB output, which have to be plugged into a laptop. We can connect them over IP, just using a network and trick our computers, which might have software recorders on them. And then we can say that's a USB camera, but it's actually an IP camera using the RTSP stream. Super clever. Got two ways of doing this. We have our virtual USB input from Panasonic. And this software is a, another free to download, not Dolby. This is another free to download software, um, which you can simply install. It runs as a service as well in the background. In fact, you know what? I'll just type it here. And we have it over here. We can download it, we can start running it. And what this does is it takes uh, multiple cameras, takes the H.264, converts it into a USB rewrap, and then we can plug it straight into, as we we're talking in this session, like Panopto, for example, um, completely over IP. So remove that USB cable, remove those capture cards, ingest it over your network. But the really popular way of doing that is actually also NDI. And in this session in particular, I think it's really cool to be able to show that. So I can then open our NDI launcher. We have some NDI tools which are free to download. We have webcam input. And once I activate it, it can appear here. And then we can actually select the camera. I've selected UE100. If I pop into a lecture capture software, so we'll go into Panopto. We can then go in and select the camera as an IP feed. So under New Tech NDI Video, I've done literally hardly any setup, but now the camera is connected on there and I'm able to take the IP stream and it's not using our, our HDMI or SDI. Everything is done completely from a PC. So you can really start to see the benefits of this type of software in these installations. That's a lot crammed into quite a short session. So I'm going to hand it back over to the studio. Like I said, if you want to download and play with any of these softwares that I talked about and also check out the latest firmware updates, you can type in Panasonic Pass into Google. We have operating instructions, remote camera protocols, and also the different trials where you can get started with auto tracking, for example, or use PTZ Control Center or virtual USB straight away to be able to plug and play with your devices. Thank you so much. Take care and look forward to speaking in the Q&A. Thank you very much, Dean. And now we will start our Q&A session. So we start with the first question. Hilma, this one goes to you. Oh. What makes the Panopto solution so special for higher education users? Uh, yeah, well, pff, this should be a very complex answer, yeah, but I will try to keep it short. I think at the very end, uh, what people really like, uh, it saves resources. Yeah, It is a, a centralized, automized uh, uh, system, actually, that, that does a professional video asset management for the universities and can be handled by very, very little resources. Yeah, And combined with the professional hardware from, for instance, Smartrox and Panasonic, it's something that's, that's a real ecosystem yeah, from, from end to end. And uh, it's reliable and it's very easy to establish. So it is, it is uh, safe, uh, sustainable, I think, and uh, uh, scalable to any, any size of, of education institution. Yeah, I think this is basically what, what universities really like. And last but not least, one of the core functions is the fully searchable video database. So it's a knowledge database that enables uh, professors and students, and specifically students, actually to have a efficient, efficient learning at a, at a very high level, yeah, I think. OK, thank you. And Stefan, the next one is for you. Was there a difference in the research results that was noticed from Austria to Germany? Um, thank you for the question. Um, we, we expected um, a difference. Actually, there was none. Um, there was also no difference between for example, professor's age or um, type of professor. So are they teaching at the university or are they teaching at the University of Applied Sciences? However, um, and that's, uh, we think, interesting, we found a big difference when it comes to group size. So the critical number seems to be 30. If a professor teaches more than 30 students, um, he reported more problems, more technical problems than if he uh, compared to someone teaches, uh, who teaches less than 30 students. Um, and this seems to be the pattern in Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. And um, so in the end, there was no regional difference, but just group size as the main differentiator. Did you ask for more details when it comes to the technical problems the professors experienced? Or Yes, yes, uh, yeah. yes, we did. Um, 
So we were kind of surprised to see that professors named other professors as the main challenge uh, when it comes to uh, to become digital. Um, however, the other challenges were the usual suspects. So um, it was uh, all your failures. It was um, complex administrative processes. Um, it was um, technology uh, mm. support that was required and requested, but not given in the time needed. So this were more, I think, up to 10 challenges we have identified. And there's also some interesting interdependence between those. If you want to know more and learn more about that, then just um, please download our white paper. And I think there's a lot of more information that can be useful for you as well. Okay, thank you, Stefan. And now we come to Dean. Do all PTZ models support NDI and are they 4K capable? Thank you, Larissa, and hello from behind the scenes. So um, most of our models now do support NDI HX2. So there's models I talked about, like the UE40, UE50, um, now support NDI HX version 2, which is going to be great for a lot of NDI networks, which are appearing in different education and corporate networks. And the UE80 and the UE100 support full bandwidth NDI. So that's the uh, full fat version of being able to transport really high quality HDMI level video completely over a network. So um, most of, across the range, yes, we do have uh, NDI HX version 2 and full bandwidth NDI. OK, thank you very much, Dean. And there's one more question for you. Are there any custom made models for control, control systems such as Crestron? Yeah, this is quite a frequent question because a lot of installations obviously do have, you know, uh, Crestron, Extron and AMX. With uh, Crestron in particular, there was a, a project to have on the marketplace uh, PTZ accessible um, downloads. So that is uh, a possibility to download as well. So you can look on the Crestron module marketplace and you can download that today. And then if you want to build some custom control systems, it's not a problem at all. Thank you very much, Dean. And then we go back to Hilma. There's one more. What does the Panasonic glass-to-glass -glass solution basically include? Mm, yeah, where the name comes from, actually, is uh, we think actually from the glass of the lens of the camera yeah, to the actual uh, lens of the projector, means the display way. We, I think, understand and, and propose the whole ecosystem yeah, from producing professional high-quality video uh, outstanding reliability, I think, and uh, sustainability because the products uh, last very long, I think. Yeah, and uh, um, the whole ecosystem from from professional video production, video management, uh, uh, and then also the displaying part of our uh, projectors, interactive uh, screens, uh, or even the wireless transmission uh, tools like Preset from Panasonic. Um, these are all parts of the the ecosystem. Yeah, from for higher education, hybrid scenarios, or pure online scenarios. And I think, I think this basically describes the glass-to-glass -glass solution and what we are working and, and, and proposing for solutions. Yeah. Thank you very much, Hilma. And there's one more question for Stefan. Professor Lang said that the students had find, had find out how to learn digitally. Do lecturers have to learn how to teach digitally or guide their students? Or is it simply talking to them via all technology? I think they have to change the didactic concepts. Yeah. Um, so when it comes to, to using the, the same templates um, uh, that they can use for, for the normal class sessions, this is definitely not working. Um, so they have to change, they have to make it more interactive. And I think that's also one of the big, biggest challenges if you use um, a standard webinar tool, is that you are missing their interaction, especially in, in, in um, large, to, when you talk to a larger audience, uh, then it feels like you're talking to, to, a, silent, um, to a silent box or a silent room. Yeah? Um, so in the end, um, the question, I would say yes, they have to change their, their concept. Thank you, Stefan, for this explanation. And we have one last question. This one goes to Dean. Um, when do the new PTZs come out? Yeah, so the new PTZs are, are rolling out now. So we've just launched the UE40 and UE50, which is available now. We've got, in the end of February, the UE80. And the HE20 and UE20 will be coming out towards the end of March as well. So all details are available from Panasonic and your local dealers and distributors as well. So. Very pleased to say that's, uh, that's coming out. Thank you, Dean. So, well, this is the end of our Q&A session. A big thank you to all our guests, of course, and you all for joining us today. Please feel free to get in touch with us via our website, 
if you have any additional questions. We are also posting the email address of Hilma into uh, the Hopin event, so you can send him a message. Thank you very much again, and we hope to see you soon. Please stay safe.